This week in the news, we have an Irish national symbol, a story about rowdy sports fans, plus a story about Elvis. I am your host, Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News for the week of October 9th, 2016. So it was announced this week that there is going to be a national symbol for craft beer in the country of Ireland. Uh, this was reported by the independent craft brewers industry. They um, have set forth a symbol to identify anything that is craft beer, um, as far as their definition of craft beer goes. And the qualifications to have this symbol on your beer label include being made, of course, in Ireland. Um, the trick is it has to be brewed in-house, not contract brewed. In addition, the brewery has to be independently owned. The bottles, kegs, or cans have to have been filled on the island of Ireland. And lastly, the brewery has to be recognized as a microbrewery by the Brewers Guild, uh, as well as be recognized by the country as a small to medium business. So for the symbol itself, it resembles the shape of a pint glass, and inside it, it states the words, Independent Irish Craft Beer. So if you are looking at a bottle or can, there should be somewhere on the label this identifier to let you know that the beer was local made and brewed. As for the utility of this, I'm not sure that there's much other than um, to promote Ireland and Ireland products. And anyway, this is more or less a marketing move, a marketing campaign to uh, set apart or to distinguish Irish local brewed uh, beers. And I think that I'm pretty sure this has been brought forth before as a question for the U.S. market, whether this is something that should be done as an identifier to distinguish those uh, breweries that are, um, that are distributing uh, independent local craft beers. Again, just seems like a marketing ploy to me. Let me know, though, what you think. I'd be interested in your thoughts, whether this would be effective or if this is something that you would be interested in seeing from your own craft beers on your shelves. So it looks like the Toronto sports fans are starting to give the Philadelphia sports fans a run for their money. Philadelphia is known for its notorious behavior at sports games, whether it's throwing snowballs or booing Santa Claus or getting in fights with players of the opposing team. Um, well, this week, during the American League wildcard game, we saw the Toronto Blue Jays um, playing against the Baltimore Orioles. And in a wild card game, it's winner takes all one game, and the, the team that wins advances to the division series. So the scenario here that we saw was in the bottom of the seventh inning with two outs. The game was tied, and the Toronto player hit a deep fly ball to left field, where Hyun Soon Kim had a track on the ball and was backing up towards the outfield wall on the warning track. And as he's backing up to make the play, in his field of vision, right over his head, flew a can of pretty, a pretty full can of beer that landed right next to him. Could have, hit, could have hit him. Could have probably seriously injured him. Um, there was no injury on the play. The the fielder made the catch, ended the inning with no problems. Um, but just the the fact that this would happen in a um, in a baseball game raised some alarms. Uh, the commissioner got involved and, and pointed out the fact that this might be the only stadium uh, in Major League Baseball that still sells um, its beers in cans. Most other stadiums, the, the vendors will take the can and pour it into a cup for the, uh, for the person to consume there. As it turned out, Toronto did win the game in extra innings um, on a three-run home run and sent those Baltimore Orioles packing. Uh, so they continue to play. So we may actually see more rowdy behavior from the Toronto sports fans as, the, um, as their team continues to progress through the playoffs. Now in the aftermath, um, center fielder Adam Jones was none too happy. Um, he also claims that there were racial taunts made against him through the fans uh, out in the center field. After the game, he said that that was just about as pathetic as it gets from a, a fan standpoint of trying to interrupt the, the play of game. For a period of a day or so after the game, authorities were looking for the man. There was videotape of the, the stands, and there was a picture sent around um, via the news circuits, the news media, 
of to who the man was, who, what he looked like, and tried to track the man down. Um, he turned himself in the other day, and uh, he didn't have much to say through uh, his lawyer. However, he did say that as the information comes out, that it, he claims his own innocence, that it wasn't him, or that there's more to this story. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but regardless to say, Toronto sports fans are um, starting to be among the most notorious and misbehaving at sports games. Our last story of the week involves BrewDog, who the owners say they were contacted recently by the Elvis Presley estate. The beer that they have that is in dispute is called the Elvis Juice IPA. And the Elvis Juice is a grapefruit citrusy IPA that obviously bears the name of Elvis. So the Elvis estate contacted BrewDog and let them know that um, there could be litigation in their future. Now, the owners, James Watt and Martin Dickey, as a PR ploy, you might, you might say, um, took the steps to try and rationalize or in a sense maybe legalize what they're doing with the, the name of the beer and changed their names legally to Elvis. So now both have the name Elvis as their legal names. And this was probably done as a maybe a legal tactic to try and say that this beer, although it, port, it has the name uh, Elvis, that it actually is named after them, that they did it in their own name, as opposed to after the name of the, the late famous singer. I don't know that this was necessarily a good move. It's at least uh, interesting, gets us to talk about it, gets the brewery in the news. Though, if you'll remember from a couple weeks back, there was a suit that we talked about um, from Moosehead uh, over the word moose and how certain words and connotations and symbols um, can be claimed by others. And I don't think that this is necessarily a smart legal move. I don't think it helps their claim at all, but at least it gets their name in the news, and I guess any news is good news. Uh, part of the promotion is uh, also that they are claiming that for the next week that they will be offering free pints, or I'm sorry, free half pints to any visitors of the breweries or of the bars who are named Elvis. So if you're named Elvis, you live in the UK, visit a brew dog bar, and show the proper ID and you will get a free half pint of the Elvis Juice IPA. That's been the beer news for the week. I'm your host Chris Hardy. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments or you want to reach out in any way, you can do so in the uh, comment section below. Also, I'm on Twitter at Straight Beer. You can also find me on Instagram or on Untapped. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Take care.